Hi everyone, I'm Aaron Wilbur, founder of The Coaches Site, and I'm pleased to present part one of the My Favorite Ice Hockey Drill Contest in partnership with our friends at Coach Them. We were blown away by the response to this initial contest and want to thank everyone who submitted a drill. It was really hard to narrow it down to the three winners, and if your drill wasn't selected, please be sure to submit a drill the next time we run this contest. Moving forward, we'll be picking specific themes like your favorite forechecking drill or your best drill for teaching D-zone coverage. So we believe this series is a great resource for our community of TCS coaches to access throughout the coming season. Also, Coach Them is going to be making all the drills submitted available within their marketplace. So if you're not already a Coach Them member, be sure to sign up so you're able to get a hold of all those drills in addition to their overall library, which features hundreds of drills for every aspect of the game, including drills captured at our annual Team Snap Hockey Coaches Conference, which features drills submitted by NHL coaches and our list of professional presenters. So thanks to Mike and Steven and Coach Them for making those drills available. Now to introduce the winners. Following this message, each coach will present their drill and provide some context as to where it came from and how they use it or implement it within their team. Also, each of them is going to receive an annual Coach Them and Coach Site subscription valued at over $180. First up is Dan Church, head coach of the female program at York University. He'll be followed by Rocky Johnson, varsity head coach at Howell High School in Howell, Michigan. And finally, we'll have Steve McLeod, who's with the Canadian Athletic Club out of Edmonton, Alberta. Thanks to Dan, Rocky, and Steve for taking the time to submit their drills with so much detail and for connecting with us to record these videos. This has been a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to working with Coach Them to continue this program. Bye for now, and stay safe. Hi everybody, my name is Dan Church. I'm head coach at uh, York University of the women's ice hockey team. I've been there for 15 years now and uh, looking forward to sharing my drill with you here today. So this is uh, three versus two over speed sort out. I uh, first saw this drill as a two on two drill uh, at a national team camp with the women's national team. And like most good coaches, um, R&D is really important, so it's not research and development, it's Rob and do. And um, Melody Davidson was the coach who I saw do this uh, with the national team. So uh, it's a great drill uh, to work on a, a lot of different aspects of your offensive and defensive team play. And uh, I typically like to put this into kind of the middle part of my practice as we're building up um, from smaller skills all the way up to more five on five. So it's, it's a good, you can vary the numbers. You can do two on two, you can do three V two and you can even do four V two. Um, so it's, it's very adaptable uh, in different aspects of the drill. So the, the drill starts with uh, your forwards on the wall in the neutral zone. Uh, we put our D on the four neutral zone dots. And uh, depending on how many D you have on your team, if you're a, a more uh, a university or a pro team, you're going to have maybe 8D. But if you're a PUE team, you might have five or six. So it allows you to go back and forth um, and you can and filter in your D. So the extra D will wait in the center ice circle. That's also where I would position the coaches because it, it means that they're mostly out of the way as this drills, drill goes. And it's, it alternates ends, which allows the, the coaches to focus in on one line at a time and one D pair at a time. That can also be really good for how you space out and time your attacks, depending on the numbers that you have on the ice. So the drill starts with the coach's whistle. When that whistle goes, in this case, the black forwards are going uh, F1, F2, and F3 are all leaving at the same time. And they're gaining speed as they go around um, the neutral zone dots or the opposing defense that, are, that would be standing there waiting for the next rep. And uh, they're going to curl and start through the neutral zone building speed. And the key for this is that uh, one player is going to collect the puck and the other two are going to fill lanes to support. And um, the other key here is that the D are not allowed to start their back pedal until the forward touches the puck. So you can vary where you put the puck uh, to give the defense more or less time. Um, you can put it more towards the middle part of the ice or uh, closer to the wall. And so those are some of the things that you can vary to make it more challenging or easier for your D depending on 
where you are in your season or in your uh, development uh, for that, that part of your, uh, those positions on your team. So once, once you get that, then the D can start to, to backpedal uh, and your forwards have built some really good speed going through the neutral zone. One of the keys for me um, with this drill over the years is that um, a lot of times forwards will pick up that puck and just go straight down the wall, which makes it quite easy for the D to backpedal and squeeze them off against the wall. Mm -hmm. And over the last few years, what I've done is add that the, the player who collects the puck will step back in towards the middle part of the ice. And what that allows them to do is now make some decisions. So, uh, ideally, we have a wide entry. So here you can see F1's collected the puck. They've skated towards D2 in the middle of the ice. And they're laying the puck off as either a direct pass or they could actually put it into an area and kind of bump it off the wall for F2 to collect on a wide entry. Now F2, as they collect that puck, they have some time and space because both defending D have been pulled into the dots into the middle part of the ice. F1 here who dumped the puck off um, to the wall is going to continue hard through the dots and splitting the D and going hard to the strong post. And F3 will go with timing into the dot lane um, and being an option for that lateral pass across uh, the zone. Um, so here you can work on a lot of different things with the entry. So you can have this direct entry as we've diagrammed here. You could also do a chip entry. You could do a dump towards a corner and recover off that. Uh, you could do a straight attack. Um, a couple things on the attack. You can practice um, a pass off the pads where you're creating a rebound opportunity. You could do a tip play for that middle driver. You could do that lateral seam pass to the dot driver. So, you know, from F2 in this example to F3, who can then shoot it off the off the pass or they could make a, another pass to the back door player who's gone to that strong side post or um, that player who's picked up the puck on entry they could delay and turn back and then cut themselves back into the middle of the ice for a shot so it creates a lot of dynamics if you add a fourth player they could hit, hit the fourth player on attack in the middle part of the ice so uh, it could, creates a lot of great things off of the rush um, for you to practice offensively So the next part of the drill is the sorting out offensively versus defensively. So here um, you can see it's diagrammed. It's really a race for the puck. So if the shot um, goes in the net and there's a goal or the goalie keeps, um, the coach will spot a second puck into that low zone so you can have a second aspect of compete. If the initial shot uh, went off the goalie and there was a rebound to the corner, it now creates a recovery uh, situation. So offensively, if the puck was in, you know, where we're circling right now, if the puck is in that corner, then the player on that side of the ice is going to go and collect the puck. And the other two attackers will fill in spaces to support that recovery. If the puck went on the other side, the weak side of the ice, uh, then that's your dot driver would go and collect that. And then they can recover. And again, the, their fellow attackers can move to support. If the defense collect the puck, it creates this competition for breakout. So, one of the things I've added over the years is I wanted my D to play this as much game-like as possible. So in a game, there's going to be no whistle just because there's a rebound where you would end the drill. In a game, the D would now have to find a way to break out to their teammates. So in, in this case, we add a coach that can come down to the top of the circles or anywhere in the zone and just be a passive option uh, so they can put their stick down. They can find some space. So D1 and D2 can use each other to break out. Um, and the, the one thing that we've put in is that they have to get to the top of the circles before they can make a direct pass uh, or a little chip play. Uh, and that forces them now into this kind of four check versus breakout competition. It really puts an emphasis on the D to uh, finish plays and start plays by using their feet and skating. And then they pass to the coach. And once that pass is completed to the coach, or if offensively they keep playing and there's a second goal or a freeze, now the coach blows the whistle and that starts the drill going back the other way. So all in all, um, I think what I like about this drill is it, it, it engages a lot of different elements that helps prepare your team to um, be better offensively uh, in all phases. So it starts with um, 
building speed through the neutral zone, sorting out who's going to be in what attacking lanes, and then this competition element of attack versus defense and what happens in the next stages. And so it's a really engaging drill and competitive drill. It goes quite fast. And when your, your team gets good at it, um, you'll really see it start to play out in game situations quite quickly. Okay, my name is Rocky Johnson, and I am the varsity head coach for Howell High School in Howell, Michigan. Uh, the drill I'm going to introduce today is what we call the Highlander Fensible Drill. Um, as you can see here, we have a drill, a two vers uh, versus two drill here. Um, we call it a quarter ice drill. And as you can see, it's a very small area. We put the nets in enough room from behind that you can skate behind with the puck, but not a lot of room. We want to keep the clo uh, nets close, which enforces the goaltenders to have to play the puck and pay attention. And as you can see here too, the space is uh, two versus two. Coach will dump the puck into open area, as you can see drawn on the list now. Uh, but oftentimes too, what we'll do is we'll shoot the puck on net just to make sure the goalie's paying attention. Uh, or we'll dump it to a player, pass it to a player who's really yelling and, and calling for the puck and is an open area. Uh, that obviously encourages calling for the puck, which we want all our players to do, is communicate. So we'll dump the puck in here. The play lasts about 20 seconds. Now there are times when they're tired, we'll blow it at about 15 seconds. Uh, sometimes we'll wait 22, 23. It depends on what's going on in the play, uh, but roughly 20 seconds. We'll blow the whistle, players leave the puck where it is, and it'll exit through that opening, as you can see, um, so that two fresh players can enter. Now, one of the critical things that we've created here is that we will not let players enter the zone until other players have left the playing surface. And the reason we do this is we find that players take their time coming off the ice when they're tired. And during that change period, there's usually a deficit of a player for five to 10 seconds. So we encourage them to get off the ice with some purpose, some intensity, so that the fresh players can get back out there. What we also will do is if players enter the zone too quickly, we will call a too many men on ice penalty, and then it will become a two versus one. Uh, and obviously that's a, a problem there, and it can create a, uh, some competitiveness, um, between the players and the coaches sometimes, and then the players, uh, the players like it because they maintain each other and talk to each other. So what you'll see here now is as they're playing, again, the, the space within here is very small, very limited time. Uh, that's the key, reducing time and space, which creates uh, quicker thinking a lot of talking. We encourage players to move the puck to each other uh, directly or indirectly off the wall. Um, we don't want to see the kids doing a lot of toe drags and, and stick handling around people because there really just isn't enough room. Uh, which So we will have them move the puck and then get to open space and expect to pass back. A lot of one-time shots come from this because again, there's just not a lot of time. Uh, and we want to encourage that and that drill and practice that over and over. But as you can see here, they've made the play. Uh, Red's made a shot here and have scored against Blue. Uh, what we'll call that is sudden death. So we encourage sudden death goal. So every time a goal is scored, the losing time here, Blue, for example, will then exit the zone and everybody, including the players that are along waiting, must do a sprint. Now it shows here a sprint to the sideboards and back. But what we'll do most of the time, depending on how practice has gone, we'll have them sprint all the way down to the opposite end and then all the way back, uh, including the goaltender. Now, this becomes fun because now everybody is, you know, arguing with each other. The red team's excited. Uh, the blue team's not so excited. But it also uh, involves some skating. So we get a chance to do some sprints also here. Um, and the players are into it. They get all the way down there. They get back. Um, if it's not good enough, we'll make them do it again but it does encourage competitiveness. I'm Steve McLeod, uh, coach for Canadian Athletic Club at Edmonton, and uh, my drill is the CAC three shot. 
All right, this is the CAC um, three shot, fantastic drill that uh, I'm not exactly sure where I found it, but I think I've seen somebody running it. And then uh, the actual running of the drill, I enhanced it by putting this coach to create an opportunity for the defenseman to actually make a decision on his breakout pass. And as well, the forwards making a decision on um, which route they have to take and communicate with the other forward on which passes it, it going to um and it's really game like um i use it i use it um quite uh, quite a lot through the year um especially for working on breakouts in that particular practice and i use it in conjunction with other similar drills uh, i really like to utilize um d to forward breakout and get shots on that and make game like have the net presence for the d-man to make shots on the net and uh yeah we the, the kids really like it um they ask for a lot and then, you know it's a good drill and they say let's have another rep let's have another rep so um it has a lot of components to it it looks looks busy but it, when you break it down it actually is is quite simple so um in terms of the details we want to go to yeah okay so in terms of the details part one is the lineup so to start the drill um forward one would be in the middle representing the center option breakout option and the secondary forward, forward two would be your wall or breakout option. Um, and on the whistle, the D-man would be up to the top of the circle. And then he backtracks and pivots backwards, shoulder checking, the read pressure. There is none in this situation, but he still should always be doing that. Accesses the puck, takes the wheel, eyes up, wheeling around the net, looking for his options. And at the same time, forward one is doing a low and slow center option uh, being available. Uh, as a mid lane breakout, F2 would be, um, he actually should be kind of going inside the dots and coming to the wall as the wall option. The coach at this time makes a decision on whether he wants to take away the wall option or the center breakout option. And at this point, the defenseman has to read what option is available. So in this particular uh, situation, the coach has decided to take away the wall option, giving the defenseman the uh, mid, mid lane option, in which time the center takes the puck and heads down the ice for a shot on net and stops at the net. And at, you can also give the forward uh, um, a shot option. So make him push, pull, make him uh, toe drag, make him shoot and strive, whatever shot you want to work on for that forward. Put a, an obstacle there, he has to go around. So give him an opportunity to have a, a shot with a purpose and stop at the net and wait. Second component of the drill, after the D-man makes the breakout pass, He's back to the top of the circle, pivots backwards, accessing the second puck. Coach gives him a little bit of pressure to make sure that he's shoulder checking. And then he heads up ice, at which time F2 did not receive a puck. So if he wants a pass, he has to head back up ice, realizes that uh, we've lost the puck. He has to head back to be an option for another breakout. And he wheels back and presents himself in the middle of the ice. Timing is really crucial here. So he has to read that uh, timing. If he has to go low and slow to be available here for the man struggling to get the puck. And then the D-man hits that forward with the pass. And then F2 would head back down the ice in the same opportunities to give him a shot. He wants to cut to the middle, shoot wide, whatever option you give that forward. Give him a purpose for his shot. He as well stops at the net. And the D-man, after making that secondary pass, follows the play up. And he gets to the blue line. And uh, both forwards are uh, in front of the net at this point, being available for a pass from the D. Uh, the, second, the D in the corner make a pass up. A couple of things I like to do here, a couple of options, is you can pass direct up, and he walks, eyes up, shot through. A second option would be the D-man putting it off the glass so that the D-man has struggled to keep it in. Or the forward can go over and make it uh, go to the other side, to the other forward, and then go low to high, and then they both go to the net. So you can get an get a, a open corner pass, and then go low to high and get those guys to go to the net if, that, if you want to work on your forwards uh, accessing the puck. But um, irregardless, so the puck goes up to the D-man, D-man walks the line, eyes up. And you can actually, uh, secondary option too would be have that D, give him a little bit of pressure, heading up to the D-man to make him read and then get a shot on net. And then hunt, what I like to do is go to the whistle. So that if there is a rebound created, the forwards have to hunt the puck quickly, the puck that was shot, not a random puck, and then play, uh, play it out until the whistle. The goal scored, goalie freezes, or just goes on too long and they have to blow the whistle. But gives a game-like component to it that you're hunting a rebound, you're trying to get pucks into the paint so that you can access the rebound. Um, score off a tip. Forwards have to present their sticks to give that D-man an option to shoot in there. And you can have a second layer of a guy backdoor if you'd like to have that as a backdoor option from that play. 
But um, I really like the drill in terms of a lot of different components as breakout options, guys having to read the routes, uh, being available communication. It's all a fantastic amount of uh, components to the drill. So that's what it looks like. And it's running out of both sides at the same time. Um, so you get a lot of activity, a lot of guys going, a lot of uh, details in the drills, shoulder checking. And actually the other thing I, I forgot to mention was um, uh, on the initial breakout is the forwards should be shoulder checking when they're going back into the zone, to be shoulder checking to see as he's coming back, he should be shoulder checking a couple of times to see where that coach is, same as the breakout guy should be looking. And, and here's another option too. Um, if you want to work on um, no pressure from the coach until he, 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 there's no pressure and then he'll break up. But if he does make a wall pass, we can have the coach go down and pinch on that forward. Now that as, as he's shoulder checking, he knows he's being pinched and he can ship it out to the mid lane breakout. They can go down and then he would become the second guy. Or he can ship it by him, whatever, so you can give that to make sure that the forwards are shoulder checking. And that coach can has a couple of options out of that, whatever he'd like to do.